Good morning, this is Jerry3904 on the MX Linux Forum and I'm here to cover some of the new items that are coming up with the release finally in a couple of days. If you saw the intro video, the things there will not be covered again, so take a look at it if you're interested. Reminding you that th this respin, we call it, is lays MX Fluxbox over the top of Raspberry Pi and MX Fluxbox, Fluxbox is a window manager, it's not a desktop system, so that things are a little bit different. So we're going to take a look at six new, six new uh, items that I think are kind of important for you. We're going to start with a document called First Steps that covers items, as you can see, by the icons like sound and uh, Bluetooth and those kinds of things. So to get to that, you're going to go the easiest way is to click on the question mark icon on the dock. That opens the bookshelf and there's first steps right there. And I'm just going to click that document, that link. And here is what it looks like. It's a very simple, um, simple document. It goes through configuration, basic configuration, how to deal with sound problems, HDMI and such things especially how to work with Bluetooth because uh, we tested that extensively and uh, then a little bit on Wi-Fi. This document also exists in translations and the link is, is given to you here in this document here. You'll see where all those translations are located. So the next item on our list, I called it resolution, but it actually is where we answer two interesting questions that keep, came up on an excellent Leaps video review of the beta. One is how do you deal with resolution? And the second one was how do I get a desktop folder? So we've changed things to make it easier on the resolution. And if we go right click on the desktop now uh, and go to settings, you'll see the display is here and we can change the display. It'll pop up, it'll pop up the screen layout editor. This is, this is uh, A, R, and R. And then you have, once you do that, you can then, this help file will tell you how to save what you do and how to use it. It includes changing the, um, the, uh, changing this, the uh, startup file uh, uh, that Fluxbox uses when it begins its program. So that's the way we deal with that. Now we put it right up in front where it's easy. Looking at the desktop folder, there is no desktop per se. This is, this is a window manager. And we handle that question by using desktop icons. And I'll, these are both desktop icons here. You can right click those, by the way, and get rid of them or whatever. So we're going to create a desktop icon that will give us access to the desktop folder that we want to see. We're going to right click and go to appearance and here desktop icons. And I'm going to add a new icon, double clicking that, and we're going to call it uh, desktop. <laughs> There's an original name, I'll hit return. There's the link, that's the actual little file. The left link command, we're going to use Thunar. I could use XGG open. I'm going to say Thunar, uh, tail data, desktop. Oh, wrong. Let me get a slash in there and not a question mark. So I'm telling it to open a uh, desktop file, folder. Then I need an icon. Uh, we go, we use uh, Mocha and I'm going to, I figured out where to go, so I'm just going to do that right now. Places, and there's desktop right there. Good, so now we have, I'll cancel this, now we have a desktop folder. I'm going to left click it and move it up here so it's not in my face. And if I now click it, Thunar will open in the desktop folder in Pi's home. Now I want to turn to changes in the dock, the default dock that we have there. Uh, this responds to um, things that we saw when we were going through testing and so we wanted to make some changes. 
So here's the dock on the on the left margin here. Um, you can, a lot of it will look familiar, but the two obvious things are the last two, the lowest two here. We replaced clause mail um, because it's still installed, but it's just not on the dock. We replaced a clause mail with the uh, LXDE package manager. Um, and so when you click that up, you'll see this kind of pretty handy um, add remove software manager we put it right out there where we can uh, where we can see it and deal with it uh, also we know that, that that you can use the terminal and and this is you use apt or you can also use um, in for detail fine detail you can use synaptic either by clicking on your start button your your logo uh, key or just left click the um, if I left click the uh, updater, the reminder, it'll take me to Synaptic as well. So there's actually three ways to deal with it. But this is a nice replacement uh, and people can people usually install what they want for, uh, for uh, email clients. And the lowest one, you, that is not a Firefox, uh, Firefox emblem. That is the emblem for pale moon because it looks like a pale moon. And we ran into problems with Firefox ESR, sound problems in particular, and Pale Moon, which is somewhat lighter. And this is a very recent, uh, a very recent um, release that our our packagers put together for uh, for um, for this version. But Pale Moon, it, I, I use a collapsed top just so it looks a little nice nicer and a little compacted, but it's a very nice browser. And people, again, they tend to want to uh, f pick their own browser and uh, they can. By the way, if you do switch browsers, let me just quickly, because I didn't show it last time, how would you change the dock? And you would open up Dock Maker and you'd click on Edit and you'd pull up the default dock. And then you're going to, you would highlight the pale moon and you would click here and go through the desktop files to find the browser that you want. And then the, it, you, it steps you through the rest of it. So uh, it's pretty, pretty easy to do that. We've had a, questions from a couple of users about how they could keep track of what's going on underneath the surface. And different users have different needs and different levels of detail. But I'm going to show you two solutions that we have. One is was existing in the beta and the other one is new. So the traditional way is to use a desktop information widget of some kind, what's called a conky. And you can get that by right clicking appearance conky. And there you see the 40 or so, um, 40 or so that are available. And I like this one because it's very quiet. It stays out of my face, and I can see things quickly. But I don't have to. It isn't screaming for my attention. Um, so that's nice. You can also, when you, if you don't want that, if you want to keep it around, is you can click out of sight and toggle that conky to get it back out of sight. The other way is new, and it's down in the sys tray of the uh, panel, and I will highlight it with the cursor rollover, so you can see reminds you that those uh, that tells you this is a system icon that on the left click shows the monitors, on the right click the tasks. So I'm going to left click it, and we get to see a, a relic, a historical relic. This has been around for 20 years or so, but it's very handy here, GCREL M. It's very handy here because it allows us to quickly track CPU, the processes that are involved, what's happening with the desk, disk. Uh, I can click on memory to see what the memory situation is, or I can click on swap to see what the swap situation is. So that's nice and quick. And the other, if I now right click it, I get to see the task manager. This is the LXDE task manager. Very useful. It's showing a high CPA, P, CPU usage because uh, I'm running simple, simple desk, simple screen recorder, and it takes a lot of space. So there's two ways to get information now with the uh, about your system. Here's a feature that we had in the beta, but I didn't talk about it, so I wanted to bring it up today. 
is there is built into the system a way of doing tiling uh, with your with a window and it's a neat handy quick way to deal with stuff so I'm going to show you it and show you how uh, the different methods where it's located so let me pop up actually I'll pop up the simple screen recorder that would be handy here's the simple screen recorder that I'm using to run this and now I'm going to use simply control plus a number uh, one through zero actually so it first does it by halves a half screen vertical right half screen vertical now three half screen horizontal, four half screen uh, below, five quarter screen left, right, lower, bottom. And the next one I use a lot, control nine, is a third screen over here. And it's very handy because you can see text files and all that while something is going on behind you. And then control zero brings back the whole thing. And I can use my alt right click to change the size of the screen and I'm back to where I was. Let me get it out of my face. Um, all of this is gives me a chance to show you what we haven't really looked at. All of this is located, this is the main Fluxbox config, located in the keys file. And it's a file that um, it, you should familiarize yourself because it's designed to be uh, time-saving and there's all sorts of key combinations um, that are avail are set up pre set up and then if you look down here at the bottom there's a whole section on basic window tiling and the, I was using the control plus the number keys but you can also use if we do a bound you can see we can use alternate uh, with the logo keys or we can use alternate and the numpad keys they all work uh, you can choose which one you want The last new item I wanted to show you that shows up with the uh, release in a couple of days is the job manager. MX Linux is quite uh, a signature, one of its signature features is the collection of MX tools and this is a new MX tool, it's only been out for a week or so and uh, because we have MX tools here we can in fact use it. So here's the job scheduler here and I'm going to fire that up to show you it. Pretty nice, pretty straightforward GUI. Interesting story behind this is that one of our devs, when we started talking about making this, did a deep search, deep web search, and came up with a, a QT application from 2005. Uh, and um, we have a developer who's very comfortable with QT, so he modernized it, and then we did some testing and such things. Um, so it's just nice, simple. You're going to click to add a new command. You're going to click on the time string editor to pick at what minute, at what hour, and what day, month, etc. You can do it. Or you can say, let's see, uh, I want to do it at every hour, once an hour. Okay. And then what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to ask it to play a, an audio file, a play slash user slash share slash sounds slash uh, alert WAV and um, just checking that out to make sure that's correct I happen to have that here and then that would say when once an hour it'll give me this little alert beep um, and uh, that's kind of neat and then all I have to do is is save it and say okay and now it's it's set for uh, as a job scheduler. I mean, it's a minor job, but it's a useful way to do it that um, is pretty straightforward. Down below, you'll see that it uh, tells me when it's going to show up, uh, when it's going to ring. And uh, there's a new version that's just being localized. It'll, it has an icon over here to switch from regular user to root. There's an arrow that's going to point up and down, and that'll come through uh, very soon. So that's pretty handy. It's one of those good examples of MX tools is to take a take a, a kind of a kind of an, a complex task and make a way to make it more robust and to um, make it easy for people to use. 
Okay, that's it. Those are some things I wanted to show you. Um, I do have a whole channel, YouTube channel, uh, dedicated to Fluxbox. If you do a web search on YouTube, Jerry Bond, it comes up with this screen, um, and you can see the whole the whole range of uh, videos that I've produced. Uh, the very first one I did was called Fluxbox 101, and if you're feeling really uh, lost on Fluxbox itself, it's worth going through there. It's been uh, it's had an awful lot of views by this time. So thanks again. I hope you'll take a look at uh, the final one, look at the release, and let us know what you think.